I want to take a minute and go over some concepts with regard to free fall. So let's look at an object that starts on the ground. And let's just say it's a ball. And it's thrown upward. Let's give it an arbitrary speed of 40 meters per second. All right, and due to gravity, gravity is going to act downward. There's going to be a downward acceleration due to gravity. And for the sake of making easy numbers, now we use 9.8 meters per second squared. Let's just call it a flat 10 meters per second squared, just so we can conceptually uh, see what's going to happen here. So this ball is going to go into the air, and every second it's going to lose 10 meters per second of velocity. Now look at the direction. If we call up the positive direction, then you have a positive velocity and you would have a negative acceleration due to gravity. Different signs, therefore this object should be slowing down as it moves upward. So this thing's going to follow a path. It's going to come up. Eventually, it's going to lose all that velocity. All right, and how's that going to happen? Well, after one second of flight, it's going to have moved up in the air, but it's going to lose 10 meters per second. So let's say at this point, it's still moving upward, but now it's 30 meters per second. It's lost 10. Then another second later, it's only going 20. Another second later, it's moving at 10 meters per second. So as you see, every time we move up this dotted line, those vector arrows get shorter. Remember, the length of the arrows represents how much velocity. Uh, and so you see it goes from 40 to 30 to 20 to 10. It's covering a little less distance each time because it's not going as fast. And eventually, you're going to get to this peak up here where this object is going to have zero velocity. The optic will stop at its peak, assuming it's straight up and down. Now, at this point, gravity hasn't turned off. We are still on Earth, and there's no switch, which means at that instant, gravity is now continuing to pull down, and it's going to actually start adding velocity back in the opposite direction. So we would imagine this thing's going to continue to follow a path, all the way back to the ground. And at this point, it's now gained 10 meters per second again. Here, it's now got 20 meters per second. Every second it falls, it gains another 10 meters per second until it hits the ground at, you guessed it, 40 meters per second. All right, and so we left the ground at 40 meters per second. Gravity took all of it away over a time period and we gain it all back, right? And so we look at this scenario, and this kind of gives you a pretty good idea of how we're going to approach problems with free fall, right? So if we were to find this is our initial position and this is our final position, well, our initial velocity is going to be equal to our final velocity, except be careful. Those are speeds that are equal. The velocities are actually opposite. One's going to be a down arrow, one's going to be an up arrow. All right, so you're going to have a positive initial and a negative final. All right, look what happens at the peak. Anytime you reach a peak and you change direction, the velocity is going to be equal to zero meters per second. All right, and so that's going to be an important piece to keep in mind anytime you're trying to figure out how high the object went. Right, so if I want to know how high it went, I'm going to pick that highest point as V final. And I know that at that point, I know my velocity is zero. All right, so let's look at what happens with the time. All right, so the time on the way up, well, it's going to take four seconds to lose all 40 meters per second at a rate of 10 meters per second per second. So we should have four seconds on the way up. And... Since it's got the same distance to fall, it's got to gain all of that velocity back. We also know that the time on the way down is going to also be four seconds, right? And so our total time is going to be equal to eight seconds. And so the time on the way up is half of the time on the way down, all right? So this is a good scenario uh, for one type of case here. Now, what's unique about this problem is that the initial position, x initial 
and x final it, they are equal and so when this is true you get those scenarios that come into play right so when we have this to be the case that's true all right our velocities are going to be opposite the time to the peak is going to be the same as the time down all right which is going to be half of the total time this right here is going to always be true all right no matter what if we get to the peak you're always going to have zero velocity all right but a lot of these problems are going to have a starting and initial positions that are the same when they're not, you get a little bit different dynamic. Uh, and we can look at what happens here with an example that way. So let's look at another example here where we leave at 40 meters per second. I'm going to redraw just to have it clear. And this time, I want to know if I leave at 40 meters per second, when will I be at a height of? 60 right so here's a height of 60 meters all right this thing's going to move up assuming it's going to get past 60 meters we know it should hit the ground at 40 meters per second going downward we're still going to assume again gravity is acting downward at 10 meters per second squared but I want to know when is it at a height of 60. So I'm going to set up my ATVX table. And A is going to be negative 10 meters per second squared. Again, we use 9.8 when we calculate in class, but from a number standpoint, it's just a little easier conceptually to think of 10. We don't know what time that's going to occur at. We do know we're starting at 40 meters per second upward. We don't know how fast it's going to be. Remember, the negative 40 is at the very bottom. We now care about this position right here. When is it here? All right, so what we do know is it's going to start on the ground and it's going to finish at 60 meters. And so we look at our equation. Anytime you have both positions like we do here, um, you can use that x final equation. So I'm going to use x final is equal to 1 half a t squared plus v initial t plus x initial. And when I plug in, I get 60 is equal to 1 half of a, 1 half of negative 10 t squared plus v initial, which is 40 times t plus 0. And now we have a quadratic equation. Right, and we need to solve this. So I'm going to simplify. All right, so I'm going to subtract 60 from both sides. Because anytime we're solving a quadratic, you want to set it equal to 0. And so I'm going to get 0 is equal to half of negative 10 is negative 5 t squared plus 40t minus 60. And hopefully in your math class you've identified, boy, I can solve that now. Uh, I can factor. Um, which one thing I can do is maybe simplify and I can do some mental math. Uh, but rather than doing now, we have a great tool. We can identify our A, our B, and our C term, right? And the quadratic formula says that T is going to be equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2 a. Fortunately, in my calculator, I've programmed a, a formula in here. And if I look at this for this one, I've typed it in. Uh, on YouTube, you can find the, uh, formulas that or a, a walkthrough to do this in your calculator. All right? But I can take this program and just type in my A term, which is negative 5, my B term, which is 40, and my C term, which is negative 60. And notice, I'm going to get two roots. T equals to two seconds, and T equal to six seconds. What does that mean? 
Well, let's look back at my picture. Does that make sense? Well, sure it does. On the way up, the first two seconds is going to get me to 60 meters on the way up. However, if I kept going along that path, I'm actually going to circle back around and I'm going to hit it again later. And it's going to take six seconds along that path. All right? And this is the same problem above. And remember, it took eight total seconds. Well, coincidentally, it's going to take another two more seconds to fall to the ground from there. So if I actually add these two times up, they always add up to the total time that ball would be in flight. All right? So this is what's going to happen with any of these objects that are in free fall. If you go to different elevations, remember we have different x, x initial and x final, you're typically going to get two t values. And you have to realize, well, which one do they want? Do they want it on the way up or do they want it on the way down? Right? So depending on the scenario, right, maybe this is a ball being thrown through a glass window or a glass ceiling. Well, then you probably want the first one because that's going to break the window. Right? But what if you have a basketball hoop? right here All right if you have the basketball hoop well you can't go through hoop on the way up so i would have to infer that my answer would be the six seconds which is the time for it to go past the hoop and then back down through it All right so again just some examples here of how we're going to use what we know about free fall to apply to different types of problems uh, in this unit Again, we have to understand how acceleration works, that we're subtracting velocity on the way up and we're adding it back on the way down. Uh, and if you can identify that at the peak you lose, you're back to zero. Uh, and these couple scenarios where the positions are either the same or here where they're different, right, you're going to be able to solve and uh, work through some different scenarios. So good luck uh, with solving some of these problems.